last year we covered the build-out of a DIY underground greenhouse constructed by our friends Scott and Crystal Van Gesbeck at Under the Tree Farms. We thought we'd give you an update on their progress now that the planting season is upon us. I think the last time we were here, you didn't have any of these stones or the garden at all, right? It was, remember, it was just like foam. Yeah, foam yeah, there. yeah, no, more rocks. More rocks. <laughs> There's rocks everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I did this kind of hastily, I gotta redo this. It's a little loose in spots, I gotta redo a couple spots. And I put in some more drainage, and there's no water problem at all anymore. I think in the first video it was leaking, and yeah. I just added this drip edge under the roof. I didn't really have an overhang, because there's not really a way to make the polycarbonate itself overhang, but this worked. Good. It doesn't come in. And There's then, your figs. Here's the your figs. figs. Your figs. I'm actually we did so so in until here. until a few days ago, mm -hmm. this the floor was just covered. There, there weren't really walkways. It was yeah. just like covered with flats yes. of stuff that's moved into the high tunnel. <laughs> so I finally get to the figs, and uh, I just put up the first uh, wire here. I just put a just a low wire, and I'm I'm kind of training the figs down to it. The system is a Japanese system or step over, they call it. Yeah. They'll just be two low cordons, one or two. I don't really care if it's like sloppy or whatever. The idea is just to get, kind of cover the ground with places to have buds and shoots that come up every year. Keep it pruned down to that cordon every year. And still keep a little walk path kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, and then right? every year shoots will come up mm -hmm. in the spring from that cordon and they'll come up and they'd probably grow about this high if it's like figs in the other greenhouse, I, yeah. you know, in a year, but I'll probably kind of tip them right about here. Okay. And then from here down should be like a stick of figs, maybe five, maybe even 10 figs on the stick and the sticks about a foot apart, mm -hmm. kind of tied to a couple wires here. Almost like you would raspberries or something. Yeah, oh, that's great. Do you feel like it's too small? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, was, it felt like it was way too small when I had all my plants in here. Yeah. Well, you've already covered that other <laughs> high tunnel. We, I was like, this is for my pigs, it's not for your plants. <laughs> like, he's not kidding, they're like every inch. And my plants are in here still too, I have to pick them up. I'm, I'm like calm now, it was, it, was, it was insane. Just like, yeah, because we probably have what, like three, 400 flats of stuff. Yeah. There's and it was. It takes up. It takes up space. Yeah. I even felt like, I'm like, oh, we have to take the flats back from Crystal and Scott. And I'm like, we're not going to be able to fit them in the back of the car. We only have like six or seven of them. <laughs> yeah, great. So, what we've got up here is kind of just like the second wave of stuff. Yeah. And a few things like the peppers that really want it nice and warm at night. It is toasty in here. It's toasty. Yeah. It's a cold day. It's been completely cloudy all day. Yeah, what has been the temperature in here on those cold days? Because this is nice. This <laughs> yeah, is like like this during the day. Yeah. You know, I know, what is this, like 70? It feels 70-ish. Yeah. You know, like kind of high humidity, so yeah, it's a little hard to humidity. tell. Yeah. And then in the evening, it's noticeable in here. It'll just hold this heat for several hours after dark. You go in a high tunnel, the temperature will start to drop. But there's absolutely no danger of it freezing here. Even if it went down to like 15 tonight, it would be fine. Yeah. And in the dead of winter, at first we didn't have the heat and the floor turned on. So it was just performing on whatever solar, whatever. I don't even remember you having steps. Oh, did okay. Did you have steps? No, we didn't even have a floor having... last time. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, no, we okay. did the floor. Yeah, like the middle yeah. of the winter. Yeah. It was, it was snow outside. <laughs> yeah. we, we actually mixed our own concrete and in a cement mixer on a tractor and poured the floor and we put heat tubes in and there's a, a glycol solution in them and a heat exchanger that hooks up to the wood-fired boiler. So I was putting in 15,000 or so BTUs an hour into here from that. Before that, it would freeze, but it wouldn't go below about 22, 23, even when mm. it was like single digits outside. Mm. After that, it was occasionally like frosting a little bit if it would go down into single digits. And then we added this little cheapo vent into the air, you know, the plants love the CO2, a uh, little space heater that we burned 30 gallons of propane in to keep this whole thing at like 65 at least day and night. And once we got, we have a heat mat there, electric heat mats on a bed of gravel to hold mm -hmm. heat. And we started plants on that with a cover at night. 
and then once we wanted to that's neat it's kind of like the the chinese greenhouse but inside mm-hmm. yeah 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 i mean i guess i could put plastic on it and it would probably hold in heat from the heat mat but it was mainly just to cover them at night right and we used this at first and then once these things were ready to divide out we put that heater on and mm-hmm. just quickly filled the whole thing up with plants they grow great and like i said the whole season was 30 gallons about a hundred dollars worth of propane and you'll see maybe in the other greenhouse how many plants we grew in here. It's kind of, it's like, it's like three times this many oh in there, God. I'd say. There's a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I guess the biggest, I mean, the biggest problem was it was so cloudy this winter. So if, if yeah. it were a sunny winter, we wouldn't have needed that. As yeah. Much. It we was were, very cloudy and gray yeah. and dour. So. Yeah. We would have had and then when we had that spell in the 80s, that weird, those weird hot oh, yeah, days, like you know, we March. got the roof fan open. Mm-hmm. You were saying you were making sure that there's a lot of vented. It's vented working space. great. It's We get a great cross ventilation when that vent down there and this one here open up. It just, you know, almost all the time, that would keep it from overheating. Hmm. And then just like if it's going to be a really hot sunny day, we'd open the roof, you know, a few inches. Right. And then that and the vents would keep it good. Haven't needed the fan yet. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, but we haven't hit, hit the... The oh, we summer. will. We yeah. will. But it's a cool greenhouse. It's like the high tunnels are hotter in the middle of the day than in here hmm. because it's working really well. All this exposed masonry is soaking up all the heat and it'll be, you know, there's all this radiation coming in, but mm-hmm. it's just getting soaked up. And mm-hmm. then you can really feel it in the evening after the sun goes down. It's, hmm. like, it's like a sauna almost. You come in here and you can feel like it's like that hot parking lot in the yeah. evening feeling <laughs> yeah like if you know like you're in a big parking yeah. lot and it's a summer evening yeah. and it's chilly air but like the parking lot is like you're like whoa it's warm right so in the summer months do you think you're you're pr- primarily just gonna have the figs in here yeah well yeah well up here so the main stuff we started in here so far was like vegetable perennials flowers stuff like that yeah. i've got a few this is some um these are the figs that all that made it <laughs> they're actually a third sold now wow. um and then uh, I have some blueberries and trumpet vines and just odds and ends. And then I have under the benches, I have uh, cuttings mm-hmm. and stuff. <laughs> and then down here, I have chestnuts. He's been doing the like woody and like lemon, lemons and stuff. Yeah, and yeah. you can smell the Meyer lemon. Yeah. I, I, it's, mm-hmm. it's frustratingly yellow, but, yeah. but, it, but it smells good. It's full, it's full of flowers, yeah. it's full of foliage. Uh, it had been downstairs. I moved it up here. It's liking life better up here a yeah. lot. It was looking pretty sickly down there. Um, so these are all chestnut seedlings. Some more over there. I've got some shell bark hickory just coming up, those like red thread things. Oh, right on. Um, then under the benches here, I have a whole nother bunch of chestnut seedlings, the seeds that haven't germinated yet. Are these like, like the second wave. Chinese chestnuts, American chestnuts? These are hybrid Japanese okay. European chestnuts okay. for for nut production. Okay. And um, we're gonna put in a half acre or so of them. We had some at the other place. We have a few here and I'm gonna put in like a little block of them. Nice. And uh, I'm into grafting. I mean, I'll be selling them. By grafting, we have some named varieties that I'll graft onto these. So th- a lot of stuff I'm working on this year is gonna be nursery stock for two years out. Okay. The next thing, once all this clears out of here, I have a whole bunch of seed stratifying for root stocks for um, apples and pears and quince and peach and cherry and apricot. So I'm gonna be growing. Busy year, busy year. I think you should have built this twice the I know, size. <laughs> he's, he's he really likes doing all these like trees and woody things. Yeah. I'm the one who does all the like all the plant food. starts. Yeah, vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You should you tell them about that wall that wasn't there. That like the metal. Oh, this wall. Oh, that wasn't yeah. There. Well, I insulated the wall with styrofoam. Okay. And then instead of covering it with wood or anything, this stuff is like, it, it m- m- increased the light level and it bounces the light around in like such a, a way mirror. that it's very even in here. Yeah. Okay. So it's not, things aren't, aren't leaning so much. Cool. Not really leaning at all there, which is kind of amazing given that they're right up against the side of a building and it faces west. How much insulation did you put in there? There's two inches of the foil-faced polyisocyanurate. So that's like R14, hmm. some boards. It's not a lot. Did you did you need to put it there for a reason? The like, insulation. Yeah. Yeah, because that's the wall of the shed. That's not that's not inside. That's not heated space okay. on the other side. I see. Okay. Yeah, that's just a equipment shed. And I ran the insulation like down into the ground in yeah. a trench to try to insulate 
this whole thing, it's all about insulating all the soil under it. Right. It's very similar, similar to, to the, the passive, passive house. house. Yeah, yeah, it's the same idea. They don't have the foundation going in the ground. In the ground, they actually they just, bring the yeah. the the yeah, the foam out mm -hmm. so they could warm the soil around yeah. it. And same they, idea, thermal yeah. battery. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Do you have any specific questions? I mean, Show I think Show us your little water line. Oh, yeah. Doesn't it great? The hose is always gets tangled, you know? <laughs> and this way you can just, oh, you know, you can just oh, just walk down ingenious. here. <laughs> <laughs> or then if you want to go back down here, you That's know. That's so yeah, they funny. They sell a kit for like $300, but he, we just bought these little pulleys. And then, yeah. Uh, you, you know. Plant pipe clamps. He, clamps, he, he basically just took some random scrap metal and bent it to a curve and then clamped yeah. the hose onto it. And there's never more than like a little bit of hose, so it can't get tangled. Yeah. You know, it's still in the way, but like you can't. It can't be like under the bench and wrapped around something and then you pull on it and it kinks, you know, and it tips over a plant. And, and that's just a fence wire that it runs on. Yep. It's with a high ratchet. tensile fence wire with one of those ratchet strainers. That was kind of essential to it. Yeah. Take a picture of that. Because that's a heavy hose, especially with water in it. This is the same Very stuff. Very heavy. This is the same stuff you used for the deer fence, didn't yep. you? Yep. High yeah. tensile. And then that, you could put a lot of tension on it so that yeah. it doesn't sag you can much. you can get them online or at tractor supply they're like five bucks mm -hmm. that's cool should we go see the greens the, yeah. That, yeah yeah the, the spillover greens that were in here before there's a lot of spillover greens <laughs> a lot of these things need to be out oh there. look how the kiwis are doing oh, yeah. they, 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 i'm like very excited look at look at this this these are the fuzzy kiwis usually they grow them up on an arbor kind of a thing oh, in this okay. like big trellis they're usually spaced like 15 feet apart in a row. They're monsters. Yeah. But uh, they're hardy to zero Fahrenheit. That's not and that they bad. overwinter in yeah. like Brooklyn. Oh. So I'm, I'm excited about it. Cool. They might take over. They might have to go because they're too big. It's, but such, like, a, it's such a medley of plants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> apples and currants were selling at the market. Nice. What kind of apples? Uh, there's a Connie and Zestar, Honeycrisp, uh, I think there might be a Golden Russet, mm. a Black Oxford. Mm. Oh, there. well, you have a bit more space in here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so everything in here started in there yeah. and it's just oh. like expanded it out. It all graduated out <laughs> to oh the Oh my gosh. Yeah. Which is not heated um, and we had to have some friends help us cover it. Jeez, you even have, you've been looping. I've got all sorts yeah, of stuff. We have yeah. a lot I've of, got a lot of ornamental flowers. stuff this year. Yeah, a lot of orna ornamental perennial flowers, annual flowers. Look at all that, that uh, lavender. The lavender there. Yeah. <laughs> oh my Lavenders. gosh. I just need some lavender. Um, and then all these were just gonna go like in our garden, but but it rained so much I had to pull them. Those were all outside to harden off, but it, when you when it rains two inches, you kind of can't have anything outside. Yeah. Just, I'm like surprised drowning. you don't have like animals come in here and like <laughs> no, just. No, it's not okay. Yeah. I mean, we have mouse traps set everywhere in the, oh, other, okay. in the other greenhouse. <laughs> I'm just caught like, if I, our, we have this half a dozen resident mice, groundhog you know. that would just like come in here. Yeah. And oh, <laughs> I've seen any groundhogs up here. Really? The no. soil is so hard and rocky. Like our old place was sandy gravel and there was a groundhog hole like every 20 feet. Every yeah. time there was like a little bank in the edge of the field. It was just like a, you know, it was like water shipped down of groundhog <laughs> holes, you know? <laughs> it could like run across oh, the driveway. And it was scary because like he could like break your ankle or the tractor you'd get a wheel yeah. down in a yeah, huge one. Yeah, or like if anybody had horses that was always a problem. Yeah. I don't think yeah. I've seen a single one. I haven't seen here. one here. Yeah, they just don't. There's <laughs> too much stones. Yeah, too many stones. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Well, Ideally, yeah. this is not ideal to have them on the ground, especially since the soil is really rough. We had yeah. to, so we're planning on planting our cucumbers and some tomatoes. We have our first set of cucumbers and tomatoes planted in here, mm -hmm. but once these plants are out, we're going to plant the rest of the cucumbers and yeah. tomatoes in here. And the soil, we needed to do some subsoiling and we put like 10 yards of composted cow manure in I'm here. I'm just like, you can't even fit this all in your farmer's market. Like you have to, <laughs> people, people should like email you what they want in I advance. know, I know. And, uh, yeah. So yeah, go to the Ithaca Farmer's Market, <laughs> like check out the tree farms. We'll, have, like, well we're bringing a tent starting, right. well, starting this are? weekend. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we, we bring a tent. The, the, there's a okay. Cornell well, Cooperative Extension oh, and the plant, plant sale is coming up yep. yeah, on the 19th. Yep, that's right. So. All right, well, that's cool. <laughs> well, thanks for showing us like the updates. I think, nice. yeah, I might, I might actually purchase some stuff here. <laughs> while I'm over we're here, we might as well get them. You know? so much. <laughs> Stay tuned here for more videos at Flock. 
10% of our Google AdSense revenue is reinvested back into community projects here in the Finger Lakes. And that's even matched by our partners over at Espoma Organic. So your support truly matters. We'll see you in the next video.